we are brothers, and it's great to be able to have a brother that is, uh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, what are you laughing at? I don't know. Yeah, so I, I do feel fortunate to have Mark. We're always kind of on the same page. It's nice too because he's not very good at fishing, so it makes me seem like I'm even better at fishing. And it's fun to watch him fall off paddle boards, and sometimes he gets hurt. I, I kind of like that. We were giving a presentation once. Somebody asked me, what's the hardest part of these trips? And it definitely has to be spending three or four days with Mark, for sure. From now on, I'm just going to probably do these trips by myself. Yeah. <laughs> you were like here at this big I would guess we're right there too. So we want to try to stay between two of these river camps. I think there's some find cool a good spot right, right before the creek too. And that would put us inside the um, Irish wilderness would be a pretty cool place to uh, the camp. Yeah. Because there's trails in there, there's some old homesteads in there. That's a good that's a good um and we'll know where we'll know where White Creek's float camp is in White Creek. It's a big creek. That's where me and your dad stopped the time and hiked around. And, and then in the last case scenario, we do end up staying at that horse bend, Barn Hollow. Well, if we went a little further than we thought last night, then those are pretty damn close. Barn Hollow would be 11 miles from where we started. We started at 16. What about Greenbrier? That could be like our, if we get there, we camp. Scenario. Yeah, we should not go past Greenbrier Flow Camp. One of my favorite parts about doing these trips is actually figuring out the logistics. It's fun because we both do enjoy the planning the trips almost as much as we do being on them. We'll spend nights hanging out, just looking through maps and planning menus. It's enjoyable when I mean, it pays off when we're out here. We'll have the right gear, we'll have the right amount of food. Um, so it just makes it comfortable for us. Both on the same page when it comes to all that stuff, so it works out real well. It's like a perfect backcountry travel partner. So as long as I can remember, we've been going on float trips. In the beginning, they were just simple day float trips where we would start at a campground. An outfitter would take us up river and we would float back to the campground. They just progressed and got longer and longer and worked up to like 100 mile float trips. And now they've transferred from canoes to paddle boards or also fly fishing a lot more. And it's just expanding and expanding. I remember hanging out with Mark and bringing a little net down to the river and catching bait fish and crawdads and frogs and stuff like that. And then this is almost the end of that evolution. We started spin fishing and then now we're addicted to uh, fly fishing for trout and for smallmouth. Anything we can catch out of the river is really. Fly fishing is just a part of it. For us, it's being in the wilderness, it's camping on the rivers. So even if I couldn't fly fish, I'd still be out here doing this stuff.
I think the thing that makes the Ozark rivers and streams so special is these springs. Um, I don't mean to get all mystical and stuff, but it's easy to see how people thought that these were like healing waters. Like there is something special about these springs and something kind of spooky and weird when you see this you know, crystal clear water bubbling out of the, out of the ground. Um, and that's what feeds these rivers. This trip started at a, at a huge spring, one of the biggest in Missouri Ozarks for sure. Where that spring branch goes into that river, it changes that river. It turns from a, a small mouth water instantly into a, a trout stream. There's some, some shoals, small little cascades you get to go down. And then at the bottom of those, there's a lot of bugs going downstream for the fish. So you're going to find a particular species there. Beyond that and in between those, you're going to get big, long, dead pools. That's where we were fishing with the streamers. You know, one of the reasons why I like uh, smallmouth fishing is because it's not easy to figure out. When you come out here, depending on the time of year, the weather, um, deep water, shallow water, different speeds, looking for rocks or more like timber structures. And then once you kind of figure it out, like the depth or the fly, you can kind of hone in on them. When we started off, it was in the upper 30s. Now it's gonna be in the mid 70s today, so we kind of been shedding layers and enjoying it that much more. Being out here kind of on the edge of a paddling season is always nice because we've been paddling for three days now and I've really only seen a handful of people. So it's been, it's been good, it's been quiet. Fishing's been great. The weather's just getting better and better as we go. There's really not much more you can ask for out here in the Ozarks. Really shoving the canoe off or the paddleboard off and then not seeing your car again for two or three days is the best way that I can think to experience these rivers. Uh, you forget about everyday life, like you're really immersed in that river experience. 